Star Wars 7x7 episode 2648. All right, we've gone through all nine episodes of Visions, and we're going to wrap up the conversation about Visions by talking about the Origins Filmmaker Focus feature and some highlights from the background story about the project. Punch it. Hey, Rebel Rouser. I'm Alan Voivod, and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy, and thank you so much for joining me for it. So if you're at all interested in how things like Star Wars Visions get created, then checking out the filmmakers' focus featurettes that are on Disney Plus is really awesome, and the experience of being able to talk about those as part of the conversations about each of the individual shorts that are part of Star Wars Visions really has been fun, and the experience of watching them after watching those episodes has been illuminating for me at least and I hope that as we've gone over some of these episodes that there's been very interesting stuff for you as well. But there's one more filmmaker focus featurette that is not specific to any one Star Wars Vision short. It's actually about the whole project itself. It's called Origins. And this particular short involves Kathleen Kennedy. She actually has a couple of quotes within this one. She's not in any of the individual ones, but she's in this one, which is great, and also it makes sense for her to be in this one. And she talks about the, you know, the background of George Lucas and how he was so inspired by Kurosawa. And she also talks about how excited she was seeing the things that were coming out of the various studios and how Star Wars was getting interpreted. And one of the things that's amazing to hear is that this project was in the works for about three years. That's according to Josh Rhymes from Lucasfilm. So yeah, it's amazing how long it takes these things. And I don't mean that in a critical way by any stretch of the imagination, just the vision and the logistics and the drive to bring something to fruition and how long it takes to be able to do so. Like, we really are lucky as Star Wars fans to get the things that we get and to know that there's a company that's thinking like that far into the future saying, oh yeah, we want to bring Star Wars anime to fans and see what they think of that. And taking the risk and rolling the dice and knowing that they're not going to know whether we like it or not for three years. They're going to put three years of work into this thing and just fingers crossed, right? And I think the second thing I'd flag is that it was just kind of a love fest all around because in addition to talking about George Lucas and his appreciation for Kurosawa, there's also a conversation about how there are tons of anime fans within Lucasfilm and they were actually kind of nervous to reach out to these various studios, started reaching out to a couple and then a couple more and so on and so forth. But it turned out that they discovered people who were hardcore Star Wars fans inside these anime studios. And that kind of rolls into a third takeaway, which is about how they advised the studios to proceed in their storytelling. And the instruction was basically to tell something that was special and unique to them. They had Star Wars stories that they wanted to tell, as Lucasfilm discovered. And so the direction Lucasfilm gave them was, well, tell the stories that you want to tell. And there are <laughs> multiple takes with various uh, directors and founders of these studios saying, wow, we didn't think we could do that with Star Wars, or you know, really, can you do that with Star Wars? Like, they were all you know, expressing surprise at the level of creation freedom that they were given and so the way Lucasfilm described it was you know yes go ahead and you know do your story and you know tell the story you want to tell and focus on your ideas and creativity and where Lucasfilm would come in was that they were reviewing the shorts to make sure that they had the heart and values that are intrinsic to Star Wars that's how it's described in the short and it also reaffirms what was in the, you know, one of the press releases about Star Wars Visions or one of the news stories on StarWars.com about Star Wars Visions where we're basically reading into the interpretation. It didn't seem like it was really a stretch, but reading into the, the fact that this was not necessarily quote-unquote canon, that these stories were not part of the official timeline. And so that is reaffirmed by this Filmmaker Focus featurette where the Lucasfilm folks talk about how 
they were more concerned with making sure the underlying mythology was respected rather than the lore or canon as they referred to it. And I'll say a fourth takeaway to consider is just how challenging this was, but thankfully this was an animation project because this was also being done during the you know, worst of the COVID-19 pandemic, or at least, you know, the shutdowns, the lockdowns that were around the COVID-19 pandemic. And so according to the short, that meant that in some cases they didn't actually get to meet the creators in person. A lot of the stuff that they did were across, you know, Zoom calls and yeah, it was just a really challenging way of working and yet they still managed to make it work with you know even language barriers and getting translators to be able to help out and that sort of thing so you know the work that they had to put into this is amazing and i'm sure that even with this featurette like we don't necessarily have a sense of the logistical obstacles that they had to overcome to make this happen under the circumstances and the last thing to share is about how Lucasfilm sees it as a way of expanding their storytelling palette and that it's instructive for everything that they're pursuing in Star Wars animation. And so that does really give you the idea that this is only the first anime exploration from Star Wars and definitely not the last. And you know, there was some talk way back when, when Star Wars Resistance came out that it was sort of an anime light kind of animation style. And you know, whereas that may be the case, it was a canon story, a lore story. And so the idea of taking anime as not just these wild visions explorations, which are definitely fun, but doing something anime that is actually within canon would be fantastic. And they are already kind of headed in that direction. I mean, they've got manga that are part of the official canon with The Edge of Balance for the High Republic, and that was done as an original story. They've also got manga adaptations as well. I believe Lost Stars and Guardians of the Wills, like those have had manga adaptations. So yeah, the fact that they're expanding their storytelling palette, as they put it, and to different storytelling forms, well, yeah, that just means that there's a broader range of excitement to come from Star Wars, and hey, I'm here for that. And so there you go. That, for now, is going to wrap up our conversations about Star Wars Visions, at least until we get to the Ronin novel, because I'm sure Visions will come up as a part of that. Uh, that is going to do it for this episode of the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always, and may the Force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, but their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.